All right, this has been a long time coming. There have been a lot of requests for the Professor 77 to put up some videos on some bones. So this is one of the, you know, one of, some of the first ones that we're going to do. This is a brief introduction to the skull. And we're going to have a series of different videos after this, some of them kind of detailing individual bones of the skull. Throughout the vertebrae, you'll see some more on the sternum. You'll see some more on the ribs. You'll also see plenty of video on the appendicular skeleton. One of the things that I kind of want to do with this video is I want to introduce the bones of the skull to you. Nothing super uber deep, but just kind of getting a feel. And how the heck do I learn all of this stuff? Well, I've got this colored skull, not because I can't tell bones apart, uh, but instead so that it will be easy for you to see what I'm talking about because color coded just makes the world go round sometimes. Now one of the things that you need to do, I don't know if you're watching this and your professor allows you to do this, I'm about to do something that people absolutely positively hate for their students to do and I'm going to take a skull apart. Now, now I don't mean this one right here. Uh, you're not going to see me pull out a sledgehammer and a watermelon. But I'm talking about a skull that can actually be taken apart and put back together. That is definitely your friend because once you understand how the bones actually articulate with one another, you'll be able to understand a lot more detail of the bones. Let's get started. One of the first things I want to point out to you actually is this big green bone that's here. This is what we call the frontal bone. And of course, I have brought a frontal bone along with me from one of our disarticulated skulls. Now, if you look at this bone, and let's see, I'll just prop him up a little bit. You can see the semblance that's going on there. Uh, one of the things I want to point out on here is probably something that you'll learn a little later. These deep, thick ridges are what are known as supraorbital margins. Now, uh, you have to kind of break that name apart a little bit. Supra is referring to superior. Orbital is talking about your orbits, your eye sockets. And then the margins, this is referring to the thickened ridges. So supraorbital margins, this is what your eyebrows are actually sitting on. And then the space in between is known as the glabella. Now, of course, the glabella is a flat area located in between the margins. And anybody who's ever seen the old Austin Powers movie, you were introduced to Agent Unibrow, whose eyebrows both met here at the glabella. Can't miss it. So we're going to just remove this frontal bone here for a minute, and then we'll move on to another bone, which happens to be our friend, the occipital bone. Now, the occipital bone doesn't look like much, and right now he probably looks like a turtle shell, but that's because we're looking at the inside of it. If we turn this model around, the occipital bone happens to be what you see that is brown. Now, if I show it to you like that, and then display to you this model, you can now see the semblance. As a matter of fact, let's take the top off, take the roof off this mother, all right, and then we flip this bone over. Bad joke, I know, and it was actually on YouTube, who cares? And we see these two bones here side by side. We can also recognize a very large hole there, which happens to be the foramen magnum. Now, if you don't already know, the foramen uh, actually is a word that means a hole in a bone. And by far, you, you can see that that's a pretty big hole. That's where your spinal cord actually passes through. All right. So we have the occipital bone. Not so bad, is it? No, of course not. We'll flip him back over. Uh, something else that you're going to notice a lot, and this kind of gets people pretty bad, is that bright yellow thing that's in there. Yeah, that's the sphenoid bone, commonly referred to as the bat bone. Uh, the sphenoid bone is a very unique bone due to the fact that the sphenoid bone actually attaches to just about every other bone, that you, every other cranial bone that you have in your skull. You can see that same yellow here. You can see the same yellow on the sides. You can see that same yellow in the posterior area of your orbits, your eye sockets. And you can even flip the skull upside down and you can see the yellow. Yes, the sphenoid bone is everywhere. 
Now, if we were to take a look at an actual sphenoid bone like this one, we'll notice that this is where they get the comments about it being a backbone. This is a, a frontal view of, or an anterior view of the sphenoid bone, which makes this a posterior view. Now, if we just put the sphenoid bone as such, and then turn him around like that, that's when you begin to see the semblance between the one on the right and the one on the left. Now, of course, the one on the right is slightly larger than the one on the left, but you can begin to see some of the similarities there. For example, you can see the lesser wings, which are here on both sides. There's the lesser wings, and ah, there's the lesser wings. We can see the Sala Tersica, and there's the Sala Tersica, also known as the Turkish Saddle. We can see the greater wings, and I'll need to tip this forward so you can really see the greater wings. So here's the greater wings. And there, of course, are the greater wings. In some of the later videos, we'll deal with the top 10 most difficult bones on the axial skeleton test. And that'll really break down some things for you in finding some of the details. Okay, we've got time for two more bones. Here's a bone that some people really like and some people really hate. It's known as the ethmoid bone. The reason why some people really like it is because it looks like a peach pit and it stands out. You can't miss it when it's on a test. I mean, look at it. It looks like something from Star Trek, maybe the front of Worf's head or something like that. If you're looking at the ethmoid bone, this would be the anterior view. This would be a lateral view. And that would be a posterior view. Now, how on earth can I pick this thing up and know the top from the bottom? Well, one giveaway dead giveaway is this shark's fin on the top. The shark's fin on the top is known as the Krista Gali. And the Krista Gali always points up. As a matter of fact, they make sure to highlight the Krista Gali in this skull just for you. That deep maroon red is the Krista Gali that's sticking up. The ethmoid bone is a very interesting bone due to the fact that it's located directly behind your nasal bones. So if we take this model like such, and I'll cut on this light so you can actually see inside. Do you see that deep maroon red that's inside of the orbit on that side in that orbit and on that side in that orbit? Well, that dark red happens to be the lateral sides of the ethmoid bone. As well as inside the nasal cavity, you'll notice that the deep red in the, in the uh, roof of the nasal cavity actually belongs to the ethmoid bone. So the ethmoid bone is down. And I said that I had time for one more bone. There's one more bone that really gets people on the test. Sometimes they miss it. I mean, literally, I, I, as in miss it, as don't even notice it. That's this little bone. This is a vomer. The vomer bone actually is part of your nasal septum. Looks like a, a, a dagger of some sort. You know, um, those of you who play Assassin's Creed, you know what I'm talking about. So that is the vomer. Now, that's great, that's the vomer, but where is the vomer located? Well, if we cut our light back on and we look inside, you're going to notice something that's orange. Yep. That's it. If you see the orange inside the nose, that is the vomer. It makes the uh, posterior, not the posterior, but more of the inferior portion of your nasal septum. And that, my friends, is a quick nine and a half minute review of the skull.